Hi, I'm Ann and I'm here at Pompa Health Solutions and we are going to show you how to do a Tanita body fat metabolism analysis today. I'm here with Tracy and we Hi. are going to demonstrate how to do that. Okay, Tracy, um, did you use the restroom to empty out your bladder completely? I sure did. Okay, wonderful, because that does affect the test. What I'm going to have you do is take off your shoes and I'm going to ask you a few questions. First of all, I'm going to put two pounds in for clothing weight. We always put two pounds to keep it consistent to factor in the weight of people's clothing. I want to make sure that all heavy jewelry is off, so would you mind taking your watch and your bracelet is off? Thin jewelry is okay, but anything heavy will conduct a little bit of electricity, causing the analysis to be off a bit. Okay, Tracy, now it's prompting me um, to choose whether she's a male or a female, standard or ath athletic. There are two buttons under male and two buttons under female, standard or athletic. If the patient is athletic, which I would define as working out or lifting weights more than three days a week, then you're going to choose that. And you want to keep it consistent what type of body type you choose. So if she was athletic last time, I'm going to choose athletic again. That will have an effect on the body fat analysis. Now, are you athletic or standard? Would you standard. Say? You're standard. So I'm going to choose standard for her. And now that I um, chose standard, it's going to prompt me through um, in entering a bit of information for her. How old are you? I'm uh, 31. Okay. And now it's going to prompt me uh, to ask how tall is she? How tall are you? Five six. Okay. And that's another thing I want to keep consistent is the height. Sometimes patients will say, oh, I think I'm five, five and a half. I might be five, six. I'm not sure. Keeping the height very consistent is important for the calculations of the fat-free muscle mass and the fat percentage. So if they said five, six last time, I'm going to keep it five, six this time. Again, comparing it, consistency is very important. Okay, now it's going to prompt me to have her step on. So I'm going to have her step on bare feet and it's measuring her weight right now. I'm not gonna have her pick up the handles yet. I'm gonna wait till it prompts me. Okay, now it is prompting me, and what, what you will see is an arrow next to the step on um, prompting, and then a series of zeros after that. So I'm gonna have her pick up the handles, and hold them at your sides like this, and you don't need to grip them super hard, just enough so that the impedance is reading through. And how you know if the impedance is reading through her is a series of zeros are gonna come across the screen and disappear. And if they're not budging, if they're not disappearing, then you might have the patient hold on tighter or arrange their feet so they're more on the metal. If the patient has any kind of stockings on, you wanna have them remove that. Now that it's printing out, I can have her hang up those handles and step off. You can get your shoes back on, thank you very much. And I'm going to read her um, tape right here. Now there's three things we typically look at first. We look at weight, fat-free muscle mass, and also the fat percentage. The reason why we look at these three factors is because the patient may be gaining weight, but if they're gaining muscle, it's a, it's a great thing. Gaining muscle or fat-free muscle mass is a sign of healing, actually. So um, a patient might get frustrated if they weigh five pounds more, but if they gain five pounds of muscle, that's an awesome thing. That means their body's going into fat burning mode and they're healing. Um, again, we also have really thin patients that might be neurotoxic and don't care about what their weight is, but the fat-free muscle mass coming up is an important sign of healing. This way we can tell exactly what you're doing on the healing diet. We can tell if you're having too many sugars, too many apples, too much berries, too much protein, um, just by looking at the fat-free muscle mass. Now, um, Tracy's 132.8 pounds, and her fat percentage is 24.9%, and her fat-free muscle mass is 99.8 pounds. Um, and what we would do is, from there, we want to make sure that the fat-free muscle mass increases and the fat decreases. Um, another thing that we look at is the BMR. The BMR should be greater than or equal to her weight times 10. And if she was a male, it would be um, his weight times 11. So the BMR will show you if you're in fat burning mode. Um, so for an example, um, her BMR should be um, 1328 kilocalories and her BMR is 1360 kilocalories. So that is good. It's greater than or equal to 10 times her weight. So she is in fat burning mode. If she was below that, she's not in fat burning mode and you want to check her leptin and toxicity levels if that um, another great thing that the Tanita show is the breakdown of the segmental analysis. So you will be able to see um, how much fat and muscle is on each side of your body, on this arm, on this arm, on your trunk, on your thighs, um, and even um, 
symmetry in your body, and so you can know what area to target if you're going to be doing some resistive training or burst training. Um, a lot of women, because of hormone rate, weight, hold extra fat right in this area, and you can see that on here. So it gives you a really exact tool in that. And um, also another thing you want to look at is total body water, which um, is represented by TBW on this script. And you can compare and see how much water weight they have. Um, if she has gained some weight, but it's all water weight, then we can figure out, okay, you're retaining some water right now. Um, it's not necessarily fat or fat-free muscle. So this is a great tool. It's exact. Um, it's great for comparison, seeing if you're getting well or not, and I hope that you find this very helpful in your practice. Thanks, and have a great day.